the Shop Senior Edition, folks. We're going to work on painting in this particular tutorial, and uh, we're going to look at landscape, and we're going to look at this portrait. A couple of things that we need to decide when we're doing a painting of a person <clears throat> or a, uh, a landscape is do we want this to be an oil painting or do we want it to be a watercolor type painting? And, of course, if you want to, this to be an oil painting, uh, I would suggest to you that we could darken this down even more. Uh, if we want to be an oil or a watercolor uh, artist on this particular project, then maybe we want to lighten it up a little bit more. So we can darken this down, and I'm going to just click on the, uh, go down here to the bottom of the uh, layers tablet, <clears throat> layers panel, and click right here on this little yin yang looking symbol and I'm going to go to uh, use saturation and in here I'm going to cut the light way down and I'm not worried about her I'm trying to basically negate the background I kinda want the door to show a little bit maybe uh, but not so much the other stuff you notice we've got a book open behind her, uh, so we can change this if we're not happy, uh, but we really not concerned about having that background uh, fight for attention because if you look at it right now, there are several objects in here fighting for attention, especially this white area where the book is open, uh, reflection here, reflection off this chair, the doorknob back here stands out a little bit. <clears throat> so if we turn that on, we can paint right here in this mask to um, bring her back out. So I'm going to press the letter D to get the default colors and then uh, right now white is on top of black so I'm just going to press the letter X as in X-ray and that will switch the colors back and forth and I'm going to paint with a regular brush right on her face now uh, when I do this I want to make sure that there aren't any uh, particular things turned on here they're gonna affect my brush sometimes you'll see it just paint from the middle and kinda of small and you wonder why your paintbrush is behaving that way well you want to come over here and, and check your brush tip shape and make sure that spacing isn't turned on you see how differently that behaves like that and sometimes you'll find uh, other of these things that are also turned on that can affect how your paintbrush works so pay pay attention to that if you're having trouble uh, with your paintbrush acting properly so let's just bring her back out if you you know if you paint too much in it's no big deal <clears throat> just like there I brought some of the background back it doesn't matter we can just turn around and paint with white and get rid of whatever we want <clears throat> so let's make sure we got all the hair here we got more than we want so I'm going to press X and now we're painting with white as you see here and we just go along here and you you don't want to keep painting our hair away but we certainly don't want to paint things that we don't need either okay so we can go along the edge here All right, and still some dark edges here. So Control Z, press X. We can get some of that stuff out of there. If we want to darken some of this down here, uh, that makes pretty good sense. So we can bring the layer up, make sure that we're on the mask, and and we can take the opacity down a lot and press X so we're painting with white and letting things kind of show through so I can start painting back some of this darkness 
because we really don't need all of that detail. We can paint some of her dress and all the background is you know pretty well painted so we don't have to worry about that. Now we do have to address that book because it's still going to be distracting. We can paint that hand a little bit more which is just painting with that right there. Uh, I wouldn't advise going very far with that. I'm going to press X and bring that back a little bit. <clears throat> it doesn't need to be as light as this that's getting all of the light in the image. <clears throat> but it shouldn't be gray either. So uh, we've got that adjusted in pretty good shape. We could bring this door back more, but it depends on where our crop's going to be. Uh, we don't need all of this information in the image because if you look right now, she is going all the way from this corner all the way like that. So we really should consider turning this in, you know, from a more of a horizontal image into a vertical portrait. So uh, let's look at a crop. Let's get, click on the crop tool or press the letter C. And if we make this a, a roughly a 16 by 20, you don't need to make the resolution 300 right now for painting purposes. We can change that if we want to print this. So we click and we drag this where we're comfortable. Ideally, uh, I would want to get her eyes maybe into the third <clears throat> and maybe have that door open a little bit. But then I'm cutting her hair off on the other side. So I'm going to kind of balance that out to where I've got her hair in both sides and just double click. And I'm going to do a control zero so the whole image shows. And I think we've got a you know pretty good looking image here. We got rid of the white book. Uh, we've got a little reflection showing down here at the bottom. Got a little bit right here. So I'm going to click on the new layer icon real quick so we can just make a new layer up there. I'm going to put it underneath where we already did the shadowing. And I'm going to paint with a regular paintbrush with the black. And I need it to be low, the opacity low, small brush, and just kind of paint on that until it disappears. Same thing up here. That's kind of blended there. Take that down a little bit. Any place that's, you know, that kind of stands out that you don't want, including right here on the dress. Now it's wise if, if those things bother you, it's wise to sample from the color that's in this dress. So I'm pressing the letter I and sampling and then go ahead and paint. And we've subdued that quite a lot. It's, I don't think it's a problem anymore. So I think our, our image is in pretty good shape. We have, uh, if we click back on the crop tool, we've got a 16 by 20 at 72. If we wanted to print this, we would simply go to image and go to image size. And we could say we want to print this as a 16 by 20. Uh, so we would just change this to 300 right here. And if we did want to make it bigger, if we wanted a 30 inch, we could just put 30 in instead. Never change these numbers first. Always change the resolution first. And the reason for that being uh, if you change these numbers and then go back and change this number, these numbers are going to change again. So let's uh, do a reset. On that, I'm holding down the Alt key or Option key on a Mac, uh, and just let you see this is a 16 by 20, 72 uh, inches. Now, if we did enlarge this, and we're going to make this bigger, not not smaller, so we'd click on Preserve Details and Enlargement, and because this has uh, so much dark area, that when we enlarge it, if there's noise in that dark area we're going to make even more noise when we enlarge it from 72 
and make the resolution 300. So if you click OK, as it manufactures these pixels, you want to look around in the dark areas and see if there's, you know, if it's really pixelated. It's more for a photograph than anything, because when we paint it, it's not going to be problematic. All right, so let's go back, um, go to the history, get rid of this. Don't need the paths there. We need the history there. Let's go put history in here instead. And let's uh, let's just go forward with the painting. So I'll click on the move tool and and we don't want to crop this. We've already cropped it. So control zero to make it bigger. Uh, all right, now it's brush time. Uh, we need to. Uh, consider uh, our brushes. <clears throat> so, right over here at the regular brush, if you hold that down, the bottom brush is the mixer brush tool. That's what we use to paint with. So we click on it, and you can see over here in this preview, this is the way the brush looks right now. Yours may not. Uh, I've used this brush several times, so yours maybe uh, your bristles may be more thick like this uh, you know it may have a look more like this I don't know but anyhow we want to uh, use this particular brush and because we want to see the texture of this brush in this image now, when we use the brushes, we, it's still very important that we have uh, layers which in we can work. So, what we're going to do right now, I've got the back pretty dark. Let's, let's double click this and let's bring that up maybe just a little bitty bit. And let's see. Yeah, that's not bad. Now, we can paint, let's create a new blank layer. We can always make a copy of the background, that's not a problem either. But we've done quite a bit of work now, and one thing we haven't done, file save as. Right out of the bat, I should have done that. So, I'm going to go to the desktop and click on painting project one so right on my desktop so I can uh, what I do a lot of times is I have a folder on my desktop and I can just click up there and put new folder uh, painting folder and then I can double click that and put my painting project number one and I can even put this particular date on it if I want to so I can say uh, uh, underscore 06 and 2215. Now, it's been my experience. Uh, the reason I use underscores to separate everything, it's been my experience that if you post these images or anything like that out on the Internet, of course, we wouldn't post a PSD on the Internet, but a JPEG, if we turned this into a JPEG, we could use this exact file name, and it would turn into a .jpg. Uh, but browsers, if you leave blanks in between words and numbers, browsers have a hard time with that and sometimes fail uh, to open files up properly. So it's a, it becomes an addressing issue. So as a former webmaster, I got used to putting underscores in. You can't use dashes, slashes, question marks, stuff like that can be problematic. Underscores always work. So I'm going to click Save. And now as I make changes uh, in my work, uh, I can you know, uh, just do a Control S and I'm good to go. Now when I'm painting, the one thing I want to do is be able to paint uh, using the canvas itself or the picture itself. So if I'm, I'm working on uh, 
the image like here I want to be able to use what's in the image to paint with let me blow this up a little bit you see I did a brush stroke right there and here and here and you see the texture of the brush but I'm actually just painting with the information that's in the photograph see that's all that's going on there now if we'd have made this a 300 resolution image and try to paint like this you'd see it start and maybe stop in several seconds maybe 10 or 15 seconds sometimes depending on the computer so you really don't want uh, your computer uh, or your files to be higher resolution at this point so let's do this is on its own layer that's where we're painting uh, I'm going to put face because that's what I'm going to work on right now and then I'm going to have a layer create a new layer and this is going to be hair and I can do one for eyes I can do one for lips I can do one for the hand which I'm gonna do one for the hand and background if I need to, everything that's in your photograph has to have the pixels blurred is what that boils down to so I made a mistake I should have undone the stuff on her before I made those layers uh, so here's gonna be face and we'll be happy with that right now so I'm gonna go back to my brushes and look at my shape dynamics now if I were painting with a pen a graphics tablet I can you know change things in here and really uh, use pen pressure and so forth I'm going to paint this uh, just like you guys are painting um, at home for the most part I don't know but one student in the class that has a graphics tablet so I'm going to show you what this brush looks like when it's larger hitting my right bracket key and this is it this is if I go to the brushes themselves go back up here it's the fan 25 that we want to work with okay now if you change the fan 25 to uh, have lots of bristles and different looks and feels and so forth um, then you may want to rename that brush and save it okay now if the image is wet we're painting with the photograph okay if the image or the drop down right here says dry and we click right here on on the paint we're actually let's click a color we can click a color right here uh, if we paint now we're painting with the color that's there that's what happens in a dry canvas when you click on a paint you're you're painting with whatever's right here when you when you use a wet paint you turn this off and you're painting again with the photograph see I drug out of the uh, dark area <clears throat> and so forth so blonde hair into the dark area now what I should have done a while ago when I was in my layers this is on its own layer so to get rid of the brush strokes all I have to do is do a control A which puts the marching ants all the way around the image and I can just hit backspace it gets rid of everything that's inside uh, because this is on a blank layer okay so uh, we can go and paint uh, one of the things I like to do I, I really like the uh, red in the lips to come further over if I if I go too far with you know going down with it I can obviously uh, paint down here and, and make that go away so right now you can see what I did to the lips 
I took the puffiness out of the lip and made it more straight line lip. Maybe not desirable. So I'm just going to hit backspace. So I did away with all the brush strokes if I had it highlighted. Uh, so now I can do it again. So I'm going to make that smaller and here are the flow controls how much paint is actually coming out and I really need to you know turn these down quite a bit. You can also go uh, like to the word and left click and, and drag those or right click run them up and down just by clicking on the word that's next to them. So let's go back to the lip and I'm pushing a lot less paint now. Now it kept the puffiness in her lip. If I really want to work on the lips I need to enlarge it and I'm going to bring some of that color down a little bit more. I'm actually going to build the puffiness on her lip. Now let's go back a little bit. Let's turn the eyeball off so you can see the change that I made in the lip. Now let's uh, go ahead with more of the face. So I right clicked to make the brush bigger and I have to simplify the entire image is basically what it boils down to. Every pixel in a photograph must be smeared, must be moved around. If it's not, it's going to look funny. You have to uh, move those pixels around until, until they softly, nicely blur together and don't have that pixelized look to them anymore. They don't have that photographic look anymore either. Now you see the brush stroke that's, that's going on right there? So if you, if you draw a, uh, a longer line, sometimes you get those strokes. I'm going to kind of hide that up there a little bit. Move some of that shadow back up. See what we can do here. We can bring some of that paint down, move some of it up. Move it back and forth. Alright, so if we turn that off and on, you can see how much has already been manipulated. I'm going to move this down, holding down the space bar, make this a brush a little bit bigger. Now, the, the, one of the big advantages to using a graphics tablet is that you can control how hard you're pressing when you paint, which you know will determine how much of this paint actually gets moved. It's really important that you paint everybody. It's not just this beautiful female, but every face should be painted with the natural contours of the face or you're going to flatten that person's face right out. I would show you some examples of that, but I don't want to embarrass uh, anybody on the internet but you can find examples of uh, where people have painted thinking they you know they they basically moved all the pixels around there's no getting around that but they uh, did it in such a way that they didn't go with the already natural contours of the face the bone structure and they flattened the image out. Obviously the forehead is uh, rounded up here. It's going, you know, it's going down the sides this way and going. So you got to remember that when you 
smooth these pixels you don't just go up and down you have to have those brush strokes going towards the side as well or you're just flattening the face out so we turn that eyeball off and on so you can see how far you've come move down the face and I'm going to make it bigger and the brush smaller right now all we're asking the brush to do is, is smooth things out and we've done it by turning down the the values that we're painting with how much paint we're actually shoving around is what's going on right now and you can't make big long strokes because if you do you're dragging uh, paint color from one area possibly into the wrong area now we've got a little bit of a green in here so we need to really move that back and forth to mix the paints together and get rid of that green color but be sure and, and don't damage this uh, area here that's the gristle underneath the, the no nose um, and we're going to address that in a minute too again we want to move every pixel in this image has to be and see I'm going around in a half circle right here to maintain the roundness okay smaller brush again coming down this side go up the side <coughs> excuse me doesn't hurt to have those little brush strokes come in there so don't don't fret if you go a little over the line so to speak or outside the lines <clears throat> like I did right in through here control Z works the same as in our photographs so now we're gonna drag this eyebrow down smooth it out you can see the texture that's in there when you blow it up roundness of the eye remember the eyelid is also not flat we need to keep the roundness to it I know there are folks wondering you know where's the automatic painting feature in Photoshop well there are some paint programs that have auto paint and when you get done it looks like it auto painted if you want to have a real neat looking portrait something that really is painted and that's what we're doing we're digitally painting this image then you have to work it's not just one of those uh, little easy fire and forget type things uh, sometimes I will um, just run the brush back and forth like that which will also smooth pixels you don't always have to paint in just a regular stroke but it is important that you don't go too far too fast all right I'm gonna zoom out and turn the eyeball off and on I think we've got a pretty good thing going here. I'm going to take this dark crease right here. 
accentuate that a little bit. And then maybe with the big brush, paint it back out just a little bit more. There we go. And blend that in more. I'm not going to try to fool anybody into thinking that I'm a accomplished artist, but I can tell you to pay attention to those areas, the shadow areas. We don't want to get rid of the shadow areas, and we definitely don't want to flatten things out in her face either. Bring a little bit of color back up into this light area and blend it. Bring some down from the nose a little bit. Turn that off and on so you can see what we did. Again, we don't want to kill that shadow going through there. And let's zoom out a little bit. And we could probably uh, soften these lines up a little bit up in here. Like I say, you can see those lines uh, from the brush when we blow it up like that. You can really start to see that. We're going to dampen that down a little bit. And I'm, I'm kind of going hard and heavy due to time. You see the difference that we we made just doing that? Alright, now let's create a new layer and this is going to be hair. It does take some time, but it's not like we're... Uh, go back to this a little bit. I got a little bit of a white line in there. Smooth that out a little bit. All right, go back to the hair. And now I want to probably go back to my brushes and maybe I want to thin the bristle count down so I can see a more uh, exaggerated uh, change in the hair, or yeah, texture in the hair. So I'm going to go back to my layers, click on the hair layer, uh, go to wet and make sure that's turned off there and I'm just gonna drag that down to see what the bristle uh, looks like so not bad Control alt z get rid of that so what we can do is start pushing the paint again you know just like we did on the face you can push it both directions you're not held to one direction. You can see uh, a little bit of greenness in the hair. It's not real. I mean, that's it's just in the photograph. It's not in the female's hair for real. And you can, you know, put all the highlights in this hair that you want to. You're the artist when it comes to working on stuff like this. Again, though, you want to simplify. So this is kind of getting out of the bounds of the rest of the face. And all this has to be painted anyway. Even though it looks black, uh, when it gets printed, this stuff's going to show. So we would want to create another layer and, and put background on it. Because all these pixels back here have to be pushed around. They have to be. Or else it's it's going to not look right on the print. Okay, back to the hair. And this is kind of, you know, between two uh, layers. You know, we've got uh, part of the background's coming in here and part of the hair is coming in there also. But that's, you know, that's okay. Remember, all of the hair has to have 
has to be brushed has to be the pixels have to be moved guarantee you if they're not your your image is going to look odd because you're gonna actually see pixels uh, you're gonna see uh, too much detail in some things so I'm going back and forth kind of mixing those pixels together going with the, the flow of the hair and this is something that's obviously a lot easier to do uh, if you've got a graphics tablet I keep hitting on that but nonetheless it's true so I'm gonna drag some back and forth through here and you you know if you don't feel like you're uh, pushing enough paint at a time I uh, just you know change some of your numbers up and uh, see I'm pushing a lot more paint down here now so I, I changed the flow and you can you can bring that blonde hair down as far as you want you can become a hairdresser if you think the uh, bristles are too uh, fine obviously just click back on the brushes and you can coarse them up you can stiffen them a little bit you can thicken the amount of paint that is moved see how, how much more that changed because of that really moving a lot so I'm going to undo that and get that stiffness back off of there and the thickness way down there again whoop again it's it's you got to try to uh, stay with the flow of the hair you can keep painting over it it's it's not like okay I, I went the wrong direction <clears throat> and now I'm stuck with the way that went and I'm moving a lot of hair now at the same time so I'm going to cut back the flow so you can you can put uh, darker areas in you can put more highlights in um, if she had gray hair we could certainly uh, work on that if we wanted to and here we probably ought to push some of that lighter hair up through there some you know I'm pushing a lot of pixels over here pretty quickly for expediency's sake and I, pr I need to spend some time building this up in here too but I'm not going to do too much with it just show you that real quickly what I would do so it's important if it, you know if you grab paint from the wrong place and try to smear it uh, you can really have some strange effects so I'm simplifying this down here because we don't need a bunch of fuzzy uh, hair sticking off into the image so I'm gonna make this lighter right down here now the cool thing is if, if I'm still not satisfied with the amount of lightness that I put in it I sample the, the hair color that I like that's light and I paint it in And obviously I'm painting again with too large a brush at, at you know for what I'm trying to do right here but you get the idea we can just 
some of that toned down a little bit. Push some of that blonde hair up in here in that light area. And then we paint it back and forth a little bit to tone it all down. There's a little bit in here that can be stroked, obviously, still yet a little bit. And then we move out, turn that off. Got to get back to the, this is the hair. So look at the difference that, that we've made in the hair. Then we get over here to where the curl is. And we try to, I'm going to, Try to stay with the highlights. I'm going to do a couple of control alt Z's here. I'm going to keep this lighter area. I'm just going to work on it for a few seconds to paint it. Oop. Bring that down a little bit. So we've created a few extra highlights by doing that. And now we can blend some of this other back. We've got some hair. We need to bring some hair down into this area. And then we're going to paint this over a little bit. The only problem with me painting is I, I intend to just get caught up in it and go and go and go for hours and it, it can really be a lot of fun to paint. So back off and I'm going to turn off the marching ants so you can't hear them, I'm just can't hear them, can't see them uh, with the control H and there's the difference that we've made in the hair. Now we can come in there and put more dark lines like she has there, or we can lighten it up like we did. Totally our call. All right, let's uh, move down to the hand. So let's make another layer and call this one the uh, right hand. And let's go in here. Going to cut that flow down more. Everything down a little bit more. We can use a bigger brush. It's okay if we see the uh, texture of the bristles in the brush. I'm going to try to diminish the blood vessels uh, that I'm seeing a little bit of in the tendons. It's okay to see a little bit of that, but I think it looks more feminine if it's minimized. I'm going to get in trouble with some folks, I guess, that don't want her to be more feminine. I don't know. So we blow it up a little bit more so we can smooth our details. And then we, you know, we can paint those knuckles a little bit, smooth them. All of this stuff, again, we need the highlights still there. Don't, don't blend the highlights back out. But we need to move all the pixels around. I'm not going to take forever doing this. And let's make my breast smaller. <coughs> Excuse me. If I could see more detail of her finger, I would, or her thumb, I would show you more about painting. But just go on the nails and so forth. Go uh, with the shape of the nail. Don't don't blend the nail out by any stretch. A lot of times I will try to accentuate the rings. 
and I will try to make them pop. back out and we can definitely soften that line by smearing it but I want you to see the difference in the hand so let's go back in make my brush bigger and let's really cut down the values and let's just mix that a little bit smooth that out a little bit Okay. And we could, you know, do the other hand and, and all that stuff too. Now, on the uh, dress itself, create another layer. And I just, I try to go along these edges that are dark and accentuate those. And then paint. You know, slipping and smearing uh, is one of those things. We've got to simplify everything in here. Again, you see my, my brush is doing a little uh, s just smearing rather than painting strokes. Because I, I see some of that green in there and trying to just blend it. See my... clock comes on and turns because it's running the brush again you want to, these graduations in color uh, you want to keep those because they're shadow areas and so forth you just have to make sure you do move all those pixels because otherwise it's going to show it's not going to be pretty in the print I'm just go ahead and just do that button a little bit more again if you're if you're not moving as much paint as you want just go back up and turn the flow not trying to get rid of those things just anything that looks like a lot of detail like through here uh, we're just going to minimalize all this if not downright painted out We need to, you know, let those colors that are there, let them in. And the button just pretty much give it a smear is what I'm going to do. Paint it back into shape there. I uh, don't want that to be intact. So, just, you know, again, it's it's... A lot of moving the pixels around if uh, we have a light area like in here we need to accentuate that the dark areas as you see I accentuate those I haven't uh, addressed all of the dress by any stretch of the imagination This would probably going to need to pick up the amount of paint moved right in there. We'll just smash that little thing against the wall, so to speak. We'll just get rid of it. Uh, right here, I'd put some light, so I'm going to 
create another layer. And I'm going to call this new paint. Because if I add paint to the image, I want to know where it is. And I'm going to add some paint along this collar. I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click and get some white. And I want this to be dry. And I'm just going to paint right down there. Now you see that is really heavy. So I'm going to Control Z that. Take this load way down. That's a lot less. And then all you got to do is, is, and you don't have to do a lot of white. I'm not trying to paint the whole thing white. What I need to do is just dra drop a dab here and a dab here and here. And then I'm going to blend that. So I'm going to switch to a wet brush. Because I need to l just lighten that collar up a little bit through there. already have you know some dark going on there and then now I've added some of that white make my brush a little bit bigger and I probably could you know move more of that paint now it's kind of heavy and I'm, I'm painting back too much white into it I'll turn that off So we can blend that back, turn that back down again. You got to watch and make sure that you're not still painting with the dry brush. So let's back up. And you see we've highlighted, we've actually built that up by using light and dark. Any place else that you see that, you're certainly uh, more than welcome to do that. And you might want to bring some fine hair into some of the areas. Down here, we've, we've got nice white there. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea if we put some white around that area there. We have another hand uh, that can be painted. And then you go in there and, and smear those pixels in the background. So let's look quickly. There's where we started. And that's where we are now. So let's just look at the hair, the face, and the hand. So we've moved a lot of stuff. Let's look at the dress. I think we've really uh, worked the image over pretty nicely. And we can get, I think this is part of the chair that's down there. Uh, we could create another layer, remove chair. Uh, let's go up here with that. And, and wow. And we can just go down here with our brush and paint from the dark area into that and remove it because we're smearing all those pixels anyway uh, we can remove if we want and then we could you know it might be a good time if if we 
needed to go ahead and work on the hand while we were down here. So we've got a little more canvas here it looks like than we've got hand. So we, we'll just paint some more hand in which doesn't hurt a thing either. We can bring the dress on down and if we turn the flow up we can certainly move that in a lot quicker. Yeah, we did the same thing down in here. We've just about painted this entire picture. Now, I can't say that it's uh, a jewel that we've created. I think uh, she looks pretty good. Uh, we could spend some more time on the face. Uh, obviously, one of the things that we could do is put eyelashes on. And I, th I think it really makes an image uh, very, very neat uh, if you <clears throat> make your brush small. This isn't the ideal brush for eyelashes, but you can see that you can bring um, eyelashes out and some of them look better than others and this is uh, all about time right now so and over here maybe just a few because that other eye is not going to show so much. Remember this is uh, on its own layer so if we need to tidy that up we can turn the eraser on and get us a nice um, eraser brush here and let's just change this to around 40% So, if we turn those, zoom out a little bit, we turn the eyelashes off, I, I like that. I think that looks better. So again, everything turned off, everything back on, I think we made a nice image out of it. Uh, one of the things I, I do like to do uh, on wedding rings sometimes we can actually create a layer, additional layer here, and call it ring glint. And we can go to our shapes tool over here, custom shape, and go up to where the shape actually is. And we got lots and lots of different shapes. There's a snowflake. Um, there's all kinds of different shapes in here. I'm not going to take but a, a second. I'm going to go with this thingy here and, and see what we get. Uh, go down here on the ring. <clears throat> and you can see the color of it is white. I'm going to undo that. Let's go back to the shape. Let's let's put this snowflake star thing on there and see what that that does. Hopefully it won't look like a star when we uh, yeah, snow does. So let's go back, give it one more try here. I'm just going to go back and use that little splattery effect. Used to be a glint in here, a regular looking glint that worked real nice. I don't see it right now, but uh, we can put something like this on there and then just click somewhere else. And, whoops, cancel. And um, 
turn that one off. So we get a little bit of a reflection going on there on that layer. I'm gonna kill that layer here. And just move it on down to the ring glint layer with a control E. <clears throat> and um, I think that looks okay. And we, we can do a control T on that if we want to and we could make it bigger we could uh, you know do whatever we want to with it uh, change the blend mode so I just selected the uh, ring glint did a control clicked right on that we'll do a you know a little control T to make that bigger Hit enter, control D to turn that off. <clears throat> you can move it wherever you want. <clears throat> and control T if we want to turn it around a little bit. Hit enter again. And we could even put a little drop shadow underneath that. See the separation that's there. Just wanted to draw that out a little bit so you can see it. And you can erase any part of it as well. You know, that you got some that's kind of going out there as an offshoot. And if you want to erase it, you, you can just take that back. Okay. Anyway, you get the idea. We can put a glint on it. We can uh, kind of accentuate the ring a little bit by doing things like that. We could also have just painted a glint on it, right? We got the paint tool. So there it is. All that's left to do now is sign it and take it to the printer. And we could do the image size and change it to 300 pixels. Uh, I don't think we have to do much on preserve enlargement. And we've got a great big painting now waiting to be done. Um, by impex or whoever we want to do it. A couple of places that we might want to uh, lay down uh, some paint are, is the gristle area which I laid a little bit on there and uh, maybe some white on the nose. So if we go to the dry brushes and we click over here and get a paint we can get a nice uh, white something uh, in this area and we can paint a little bit right on the uh, lip itself so we can just accentuate that just a little bitty bit so let's go with the dry brush and let's just put down a little white paint and that's kind of scattered nicely, actually, like that. that there, I don't really have a problem with that, uh, but we'll we'll smooth it out anyway. And I just dropped a little bit down in here too uh, to accentuate this area a little bit. And then we can turn on a nice uh, fan brush. And let's make sure that, uh, yeah, got plenty of bristles. Whoops. Got to switch over to turn that off, dry, uh, clean the brush, go to wet, and let's just smooth that in a bit. Don't want to draw the dark areas in. All right, you know, same on the, the gristle area. And some people will darken that little valley in between on that gristle area. Let's just bring that down the nose a little bit. Zoom back out. And let's look at that layer real quick. So we took a little roundness off the nose, 
we accentuated the lips with a little light and we put a little light in that gristle that's just above the lips anywhere that you see uh, some light like over here on the jaw you can add you can go in and turn on the dry brush again and add a little bit of uh, white area in there and uh, maybe some up in here a little bit and then work that in you know it's only on this layer anyway so if you don't like it uh, you, all you gotta do is turn that layer off or throw that layer away so let's turn on our, our uh, wet brushes again clean the brush turn that off because we don't we don't want that uh, <clears throat> paint clean the brush and we're going to bring this way down could have gone over and, and loaded up Steve's brush couldn't I wherever it may be now that I've reset everything let me just use this one for now and zoom in a little bit and we'll just work the color in you see it's a little bit gray a little bit white we push some of the color that exists in there along with the color that's there pulling it out probably a regular white instead of getting that grayishness in there would have been uh, better now let's zoom back out control minus and let's just see the difference that that made kinda neat isn't it that it'll do that let's go up there at the forehead we start pushing it around and it's it's about lightening up an area so you don't want to completely push it to where it's gone again extend it up a little bit and make sure you're rounding it out now off and back on so let's zoom back out and you can see the difference that it made in the image so you got to decide whether you like it, you don't like it. Uh, I don't know that I like that much up in this area. So I'm going to put a uh, mask right on there. Change back to the regular brush tool. And I'm going to change this to about 30% or so. And let's take that down a little bit. Now let's see yeah I like that we can do the same thing with this so you can see where we painted subdued that pretty much completely so I'll print with or change that with pressing the letter X to switch back to white now you can see the white come back in again so you have total control over these colors and, and what you change and do to it. I uh, hope this part was very helpful. Let's go on to the landscape uh, part of this. One last look before we go. I wanted to show you that I did go through the hair and finish painting <clears throat> so there weren't, wasn't the uh, glommed up areas in there that the pixels hadn't been moved in so I wanted you to see that real quick that's all okay let me show you what I've done so far if I turn uh, the eyeballs off you'll see uh, this is the regular image uh, that I was working on here is some of the sky and clouds painted and the reflections down below And here are some of the trees painted. Also had a tree, I guess just one tree painting over here. 
as well. Now let me show you um, the, the some of the work that I've been doing. Obviously, every pixel has to be moved in here as well. And you can see where I left off. Um, so we create a tree image or a tree layer. I'm going to click on the new icon, new uh, layer icon. <clears throat> and obviously that's a huge brush. And what you want to do is uh, click and you drag these things in the direction that they're already going. Of course our flow is way down. These things would need to be moved up quite a bit. So you, you start dragging all of these things in the direction that they're already heading. Now when you get into areas like this, well, let's find a, a place here real quick. Uh, down in here, it's a lot more difficult to find the direction that things are going. Here, it's, it's more obvious. But remember, all of this stuff has to be uh, smeared. Uh, everything has to be simplified. You cannot uh, have this look like a painting unless all of this stuff, and you might even want to run uh, this stuff, the numbers to the limit. Obviously my brush is kind of big for some of this. Now obviously uh, you're not keeping the look of the fur intact or whatever the trees are and you don't want to do that anyway you're working on uh, making a painting not you see I was painting with uh, some color in there instead of blurring the pixels they should be able to blur whatever color there is. Oops, control Z that. Um, so an, a landscape obviously is a lot more challenging, especially when it has uh, things going in all different directions. The, the key is you have to take your time. Uh, just like in the portrait, it all has to be, like I said, it all has to be smeared around every pixel has to be manipulated or else it looks really really strange and here you're dealing with so many directions with so many things like this if, if you just take this and drag it up you just turn that whole thing into yellow so you can't just drag the whole thing you've got to here's this color is right here is that color Right here it's this color, down here it's green. All right, so green, yellows, whites, and browns. So that's that's the way these things have to be painted too. You could go through here and just paint the browns. All the browns need to be uh, simplified. The greens all need to be simplified you can go through there and simplify all the way across one color if if that's what you want to do it's whatever works best to your workflow but there isn't an, an automatic paint function in Photoshop and like I said I've, I've seen uh, automatic paint functions in other software and it looks automatic otherwise it doesn't look painted <clears throat> I think you're gonna have to admit when I get some of this done I'm not gonna paint some of that that's going off to the side but I think you're gonna admit this looks like a you know the grass that you'd find in the field but it's gonna look painted that was painting from the wrong place so I didn't get the light area I'm using the space bar holding it down and let's 
So I can, I really, you know, start doing this and I'm just in another world. I just really enjoy it, get lost in it. It's fun for me. It isn't for everybody. And if it were, I guess nobody would ever ask me to do a painting. They would do the paintings themselves. Although I don't work for fees anymore, so I rarely ever take on a, a painting job anymore. So let's move over here to the edge, finish this part of it up. Running from the light area down, that way I can be sure and nab some of that lightness. And I'll go simplify the stuff that's in between some of these. Because all that stuff has to go away. That pixelization looking stuff cannot stay there. Paint on across over here a little bit. See anywhere where you see those little squares, that's a problem when it gets printed. And that's what you got to be on the lookout for. It has to go away. I hit my space bar, move it over. Come up and grab some of this stuff up here at the top. Simplify it. Get rid of background stuff when I can. Back in here. Now let's zoom out. I think you have to admit that still looks like the grass. And it's getting very nicely simplified and still going to really give it a nice painterly look as we go through there and that's you know th this is all time consuming but you think about the time we spent on the portrait not that long really but we're not you know that's certainly can't say at this point that that's ready to be printed and turned around and given to a client either you you know if you don't spend much time on it, it shows. And people don't want to hire you back. That's how people get known. Let me keep on going through here. Dark grasses, bring the dark grasses up. Again, we got to get the stuff that's behind them simplified. Making that difference between one and the other. Oops, Control Z that. Didn't mean to cut and run sideways. So I think you get the idea on that part. Uh, hopefully you're getting the idea. See, there, a lot of this is just strictly dragging those pixels. You can see the jagged edges of the pixels. That can't be there when it's printed. Just cannot have those little squares and stuff. So you're, you're painting a lot of details even though you're simplifying. That's, that's the crazy thing. And if it's out of balance, you got to paint some more in make the happy trees and so forth find that happy balance can't remember all the happy stuff when painting trees but anyway I think you get the idea okay you know some of that can just be turned to blurred colors it's okay you can't throw it all away or then it just 
flat tree. So you start finding the, the blacks, and you find the lighter areas, simplify those. And you see what I did with this tree, and, and you, you know, you do that all the way across. You grab those pixels that represent the tree limb, you look for the direction that they're going in. You certainly want to, the different tones that are in the tree, the darker greens, you want to keep that. Again, if you don't, it goes flat. And you don't want flat looking trees, it's not a pretty sight. So you pick up, lay down those colors all the way through the image. This one's starting to look a lot better over here. Unfortunately, you can't um, paint pictures in segments. You got this segment looking pretty good. Let's print it. Doesn't work. So you can see we've, we've got overlapping trees here and back, you know, we got the reflections. So <clears throat> I would definitely put the reflection layer uh, or created a, a reflection layer so you can control that so it doesn't look as harsh and you got to kind of you know keep the same uh, basic look that you're seeing in the original so you, you've got your work cut out for you when it comes to reflections a lot of this would have been helped if I'd have used a smaller brush like I am right now this makes a lot better looking uh, branches still does a nice job simplifying and you know if you find a brush that's working well for you you need to save it so I come let me move this over if I go to my brushes and click up here <clears throat> I can do a new brush preset. You can't see that because it's going off the charts. Let's see. Let's bring it over here and just click up here and uh, new brush preset. And I can say Steve's uh, paint for portrait. Click OK, and and then uh, the last brush that would be up here should be my. No, it's not there. But if you go over here, it's in the uh, brush presets. Steve's paint for portrait. Okay, so you don't worry about these so much. These are your presets because these don't have. Uh, the same numbers assigned. If you click that one, let's just click this one, uh, and you see the shape dynamics is on, smoothing is on, you see the shape of that. If I go over and click back on Steve's brush, you see that we're right back to the same size brush, and the shape dynamics is the only thing checked, uh, but the bristle brushes or the bristles are, are going to be the same. And so forth. So you can store all kinds of brushes in here in your brush presets. And um, <clears throat> you see right up here the last few brushes that that I've been using, which is also healthy, helpful. If we go up here and look at our brushes and go down to the last brush, you'll let your thing hover over at your mouse. You'll see that's my paintbrush right there. So you can also go over here and rename brushes. Uh, you can save a brush. Now working the clouds uh, is much like working the face in the other image. If uh, we go down and, and we work on the clouds, let's see that's that's the trees obviously. 
uh, there's clouds sky here if we work in the clouds we want to have a nice soft brush again we want uh, it to be wet we want the loads to be way down or all these numbers to be way down because we don't want to shove around a lot of paint and so obviously we want uh, a big brush let's click back on the brushes and <clears throat> a lot of bristles because you are trying to smooth this after all so a lot of times I'll just give it you know an actual swirl uh, to give that roundness to it and obviously that's a huge huge brush and, and clouds uh, are unique but you've got to keep an eye on these clouds and make sure that you have <laughs> things in common uh, or it doesn't look like a reflection I've gone too far on a bunch of mine as you can see there I've I've painted and painted and painted whereas that doesn't look anything like this now so I can go in and erase uh, a bunch of that because it's on its own layer so I'm going to turn on my eraser and I'm going to make this about 30 percent on this layer and just start painting to get back see what you know because underneath is that the the original layer so I can paint 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 because the thing that's on this layer are the clouds themselves now best thing to do obviously is to create a mask and then you don't really erase everything like I just did but we can also go up here and erase our mask again that should have been done with a mask and we can bring stuff back if we want to so painting the clouds you, you still have to keep in mind what's you know what we're reflecting down here uh, as we paint the mountains uh, I also undid the the mountains doing all that uh, fine eraser work you see the mountains were painted there as well we really simplified them if you look at the reflection the reflections haven't been painted yet and we could you know keep that in mind as, as we paint down here uh, that we have to uh, give this the same kind of look down here that this has up here otherwise it's not going to look like a reflection it's reflecting something from somewhere completely different again though it all has to be uh, moved around or it's not going to look right at all so we again I've, I've got the all of these numbers turned way down so it's a little harder right now to uh, move the paint around a lot but I think you're getting the idea See around those so you're seeing some of the reflection of that So hopefully all this is making some sense you know, and you worry about even less detail in the reflection obviously than than you do up here and this you're not too worried about a lot of accuracy all right hopefully all of this painting has helped I know this has been a long video oh, this one's certainly much shorter than the other one but remember you can you know work any of these uh, brushes that are inside uh, your brush palette if you go up to the little gear under your brushes there are lots more brushes than you would 
by default see out here. Uh, anytime I'm just going to uh, load the assorted brushes. Actually, I don't want to do that. Uh, just assorted brushes and OK and no. So now I've, these are the very, very, very basic uh, brushes that you would have. So then you come up and you click on the new icon or the gear icon and then you I wish there was a all because I would just load all of these brushes uh, you can click on um, assorted brushes and if you append it adds the brushes to the brush palette if you just click OK it's going to throw these away and put the other brushes in its place that's the problem as you go through these so as you go down here and say uh, I want calligraphy type brushes you click OK and it just replaces your other brushes with the calligraphy brushes so if you want to <clears throat> add brushes to this you just click append and it adds new brushes so we go on down through there uh, basic brushes append <clears throat> and then <clears throat> we'll make this a bit bigger and click on the gear again and we can say uh, let's go down to natural brushes append and you see that there's some chalk brushes now what are called the erodible brushes because they wear as they uh, as you use them natural brushes too append so you see the different brushes that are there and so forth. You can just keep going through here and uh, here are the dry brushes. See there's a fan brush here. <clears throat> uh, the faux brushes. And I'm not going to keep you on here watching this but anyway that's how you how you load all the different brushes up and then you start editing the different brushes uh, over in the you know turn this on and uh, go through your ship t uh, tip shapes and change your bristle bristles <laughs> Brussels and I'm gonna make this brush a bit bigger and you see how this particular brush is set up and you know you can change the number of bristles and how it will interact so all of these brushes that come in Photoshop will definitely behave differently and a lot of them will have their own presets already so if you go down here there's lots of great presets if you don't have the presets open you can go in here brushes load the brushes up where you can see it and the presets and you'll see uh, lots of great brushes that are already included by the good folks at Photoshop. And up here now is that flat brush. So, uh, so have some fun with, with painting. Uh, get experimental. Find the stuff that you gravitate to uh, to paint on and just work on that stuff until you get comfortable with it and then move on to something else keep experimenting keep playing keep uh, adding to your uh, toolbox the things that you can do and are accomplished at in photoshop i'll talk to you all later bye bye